Oh, welcome to another RD Works Learning Lab. Um, today is going to be a fairly short session because we've got nothing radical and new to look at and discover. All materials will be suitable for producing pictures that may be something like 127 dots for each, which is a 0.2 dot. But when you start going down to a 0.1 dot, hmm, some materials just don't like it. So today we're going to experiment with particularly one material, which I've just done a little bit of a trial on to make sure that it's okay, um, but I've done nothing more than that. And it's just an amazing coincidence that while I was doing this quick experimental work, um, that a correspondent came online and said, hey, have you ever tried Formica? I think it will work very well. Well, in my normal cynical way, I thought about it and wondered whether or not it really will or it won't, but today, we're going to find out. I don't have any Formica, and that was my problem. But then, I remembered that up in my workshop roof here, for about the last 30 years, I've had a small piece of Formica worktop. Light grey, so it's a nice colour to work with, and later on, we'll be experimenting with it to see just how good it is. But in the meantime, the, the plan A today was to do some work with this um, foil material. So I think we've basically got two types of material here that we're working with. There's a foil layer on top of a backing, which is normally, <coughs> which is normally something like PETG, which does cut all right, but we're not going to cut. We're just going to pierce through the lovely shiny foil surface to the layer that's underneath. So we should be able to get a nice contrast um, for picture use. Uh, it depends on what size and quality dots we can get from the material. Now, I've got a big box of samples here that's been supplied by a company here in the UK. It's a, it's a company called um, Foiling Services. Anyway, this looks like some interesting material. Not all of it is suitable because some of it is white on white. And so, you know, there's no point in me engraving on white. We've got black on white, like this, which is a, a nice material. It's not black, it's a textured almost a wood grain black. So that looks like a very good material to work with. We've got some uh, silver and gold foils on white, which might come out okay. We've got some nice copper on black, which I suspect will come out well. Yeah, we've got some pink on black. That might look nice. So we've got a, we've got a variety of samples here that I can play with. Now, I'm not gonna, as usual, I'm not gonna subject you to watching all of these. We'll do one or two of them and see how they take dots, because that's the important thing. If they can take a good dot, then yeah, we can do some picture work with them. Undoubtedly, without any problem at all, these will just do straightforward linear scan work. But that's not what we're about working with and testing at this moment in time. So I've got a few samples there that I want to run. I've got this big chunk of grey for mica, which as you can see is thick and it's really too big to go in the machine but we will make it go. To start with we've got a piece of material here which I think it's gold isn't it? Uh, yeah it's gold on white. Well think about it, gold on white is not going to give us a really good contrast. We're looking for something like, here we go, gold on black. Now, that looks like an ideal material because it's, you know, we've got a black background and we'll have a, a nice gold foreground. So, yep. Now, think about it. Normally, with most engraving, we will be having positive engraving, i.e. we should be engraving black on a white background. But here, we've got a black background, so we're going to have to set the engraving to negative. And we're going to view it from the front this time, not the back. So we leave it the right way round, but we negative engrave it. This is far too small a sample for my complete picture. But we will put the bottom of the picture on here, because that's where most of the interesting detail in my shipwreck picture is. Now this comes with a protective film on it, and I don't want to engrave through the film, because the film will actually absorb some of the energy. I want the energy to go straight into the film surface. Now, as you can see, this material is not quite flat, but it is quite flexible, so we should be able to just put our little magnets on the corners 
and pull it down and hold it in place. Nominally this lens is 9mm focal distance away from the surface, but I have seen it work better at 8.5mm. So we shall have to find out what the best focus is for this material. We'll start off at the expected 9mm and we'll just run our little dot test. No, the dots are 0.2, so maybe it's 8.5 millimetres. No, I think they're worse, so we shall have to go the other way, 9.5 mil. Well, it is getting better, the spacing between the dots is getting a little bit better. Can't believe that we've got to go all the way out to 10 mil. No, 10 mil is going the wrong way. Well, this is not a material that wants to play ball with me. So, we're going to have to abandon this particular piece of material. Let's go to something pretty and extreme. Pink on black. Now, whether this is the same stuff, maybe we'll only ever be able to get a 0 0.2 dot. It's one of those materials. I'm going to try nine. Beginning to look interesting. I can just about see gaps between those dots now, so I would say that on average they are about 0.18. And that's probably about as good as I'm going to get. So we'll set the resolution to a 0.18 dot and we'll give it a try. In fact we could play safe and set this to 127 dots per inch, which is a 0.2 dot, which looks to be really comfortable. Now, as you can see, this is producing really strange fumes. So we're going to try and whip them away with the lid down. Well, there we go, catch it in the right light. And it's not bad, is it? Now, I've also done one in brushed satin gold. And that has come out really nice. Now, I have to say, that is very impressive. I mean, let's look at the details. West and London, completely visible. All these little gradations around here. It's a little bit darker than the original, but actually, I think it's got a very nice, moody look to it. It, it, it really is a super quality picture. Okay, so there's a little bit of grain in the background. But what is this stuff? is silver and white. Now, I can't quite work out what I really ought to have as what. Should I have the silver as the background and the white as the foreground? Now that's another brilliant image, but of course, when we look at that, we can see that it's really the wrong way round. I should have made the, uh, the foil the background. But regardless of whether I've got that as a positive or a negative image, when we start looking at the detail in here, things like, you know, West and London, and, you know, these are all absolutely superb. So, some of these materials are actually very good. Now this particular one, which I should have done as a positive image rather than a negative image, worked extremely well. Well, we've had some successes and failures, but I do want to thank Foiling Services for providing me with some samples, because, I mean, to be honest, this is just superb, isn't it? I mean, these are very good as well. That one, that one would have been good if I'd have done it positive instead of negative. Well, okay, so my piece of material doesn't really fit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to sit it on the frame of the machine and we'll see how level it is. Okay, well I've just packed this up so that it's completely level within probably better than 0.1 or 0.2. This was the low corner and I've had to put half a mil under these three corners. So it wasn't very far out, but that's enough to mess our focus up. For convenience, I'm going to do my test right down at the front corner of the machine here. It looks to be, the focus looks to be about right. Let me just put the power up a shade. Now they do look quite nice dots. 
I'd try a little bit more power, see if we can get a bit more current into them, but I'm worried that if I put it up another percent, I shall get bigger dots, which I don't want. But who can say what the power should be, because it all depends on the material. This is quite a hard material, so maybe it'll take it. It hasn't increased the dot size. If anything, it's decreased it, which is really quite weird. Let me push it up one more. That is really weird. A bit more power, and they are absolutely superb dots. And they are definitely 0.1 or less. So that means that we can comfortably run this job at 256 pixels per inch. And that's 100 millimeters a second, 14% power. Here we are almost at the end of another session. I did promise it was going to be a short session today. We're just experimenting with various materials to see what takes a precision dot. Because not all materials can take a precision dot. As I said to you, somebody very kindly suggested that this material here, Formica, might be a good one to try. Plain white Formica. Sounds like a good idea. Well, I don't know. As I stand here and look at it, I've been blown away so many times I feel like a leaf. Come and have a look. This is 254 dots per inch. And you ask yourself the question, how much further do we need to go? We've asked this question several times now. I mean, look at the detail on that dial yet again. I mean, again, this is absolutely staggering quality, isn't it? I mean, it is photo quality. Now I was using what I suspect was a sub 0.1 dot to do this. I'm using the Jarvis dither. Now the strangest thing was the dots got better as I pushed the power up. Now that's a bit counterintuitive for everything else that I've been seeing. Normally when you push the power up, the dots get bigger. I can't explain it. But maybe it's something to do with the strange properties of the way this lens focuses. I have noticed that you have to change the focus for every different material. It may only vary by half a mil, but in this particular instance, not only did we have to change the focus just a little bit, we also had to change the power. So I want to thank my correspondent for suggesting Formica. It turned out to be a revolutionary material. The only problem is, how many people want tattoos on their worktop? Not a big market for that, I don't think. Well, I keep thinking that I've done with dots, and there seem to be little corners that I still haven't brushed away. Materials? Yeah, I could keep testing materials, but I'll only test materials if I happen to have them. So, don't ask me to tattoo your granny's bottom, because She's not invited. And I don't think I can go much further with this until I get one more possible improvement. I have a one inch Plano convex lens on order. And it's just possible that if I put that in as my first lens, I shall get more aberration and more disruption to the focus point. We'll have to wait and see. That could be two or three weeks before that arrives. But in the meantime, I'm off on a short break for a week or so. So don't expect too much from me. And if I don't answer your emails or your comments, why should I? I'm on holiday. So anyway, thank you for your attention again, and I'll see you in the next session.